What's up, YouTube? Shout out to the homie Baby S Mac. Today, we're gonna profile OG Bulldog. Hey, I'm in the morning. May I kick a little I get up, pop, pop, May I kick a little I will always be a hustler. May I kick a little I will always taste my bread. May Kick a little something for my people. May I kick a little something? What makes you hear what I say? May I kick a little something for the so loud and clearly. Hey, that was it. I never stopped. I never stopped banging. I, I started banging hard, and I got so hard till it was a shame. We made a way. You know, we vanguard. We made a way. You know, chitty chitty bang bang, crystal don't die, they multiply, crip or die. Quote Raymond Washington, unquote. Bulldog was one of Raymond Washington's top lieutenants, but would eventually become a general himself. Benny Ray Simpson was born May 29, 1954, to Miss Betty Jo Simpson and Mr. Edward Lee Rogers in Idabel, Oklahoma. Many of us know him as Bulldog, but his closest friends called him Ray or Ray Ray. After growing up in Idabel, Bulldog moved to Los Angeles, California in 1968, where he was raised by his devoted uncle, Mr. Earl D. Ramsey. Earl was Bulldog Mom's older brother. After attending high school, Uncle Earl began doing farm work, and then he joined the Army. He served in the U.S. Army from October 16, 1962 until he was honorably discharged October 15, 1968. That's when him and Bulldog moved to Los Angeles. While in the Army, Earl's highest ranking was Private First Class E3. He earned recognition as a sharpshooter, and he received the Medal of Honor. Benny accepted Christ at an early age and went to church faithfully. He attended Bethune Junior High and John Fremont High School in Los Angeles. According to the manuscript in which he left behind, written by the one and only Benny Bulldog Simpson himself, he grew up across the street from the Mont, where he got to see the Avenues, who he called the biggest gang in LA. Ray went back home to Oklahoma for the summer of 1969. When he returned, he was excited to be going to John C. Fremont High School, where he lived across the street on the east side of South Los Angeles. As Ray and his closest friends entered Fremont High School, this marked the beginning of the east side Crips. He writes about it in his autobiography. Bulldog was the first Crip to go to jail in 1969 for the first murder. Back in the day, he had caught a case, I believe, up at Washington High where he did something uh, fork Lord. I don't have to speak on it if you understand it and know you know what it is. In A.C. Moses' book titled The Starting Lineup, Baba Louie says, Bulldog was incarcerated during the time his old neighborhood had flipped the script. At the time, I was unaware as to whether or not he knew. Prior to our brief sighting of each other in YTS, we last saw each other as Crips prior to his 1970 or 71 conviction. I was made to believe his three-year absence had handicapped him from being informed. It was my hidden agenda to let him know. When he came home, you know, he came home pushing the line with Hoover. Him and Bam Bam joined together. Bob Louie stated, Benny Ray Bulldog Simpson was the general in command of the many Crips that were in the main population while they were locked up. Uh, I, be, I formed a personal relationship with Benny uh, when he came home. The Bulldog was an East Side Crip. We were friends, me, him, and Tony Stacy. Uh, 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 Blind, uh, Dead Eye Clint, uh, Smiley from A Tray. Uh, we were inseparable in, in uh, Sugar Beer from A Tray, Hoover's. These are our Hoover's. And he was original Hoover Crip, uh, Sugar Bear, but before that Hoover's ever started, he was 
he was a uh, he was Raymond Washington's number one man, and he's the one that would go out and knock on doors and go up to schools and, and flip some shit. He was a hog. That's what he was. He was a fucking hog. In Bulldog's manuscript, he writes about throwing ditch parties off of Broadway in the 60th streets. He wanted all the Crips to show up, party hard, and have a great time. At one point, he mentions that this female seen Jamel Barnes with Raymond Watson a lot. It appears he had an admiration for the parties Jamel Barnes and the Avalon Gardens threw, as they had big turnouts. He also mentions in detail that this was before there was a Broadway game. He makes reference to Pitbull referring to Jamel Barnes as a pretty boy. He goes on to talk about how he was going to send the walnuts through Jamel's next party in the Avalon Gardens to help juice the party up. I've heard rumors about Bulldogs starting the 77th Street Boys, the first Crip gang on the west side. We're talking about the 77th Street Boys. This was a tough gang. It was ran by a good friend of mine called Bulldog. I don't know where Bulldog is to this day, but Bulldog started it. And it was on the side of the freeway of 77th Street Police Station. It was. By. So that's on the east side of Freeway. Right. It was on, but but it was it, it, it was it was closer to you know the west side than the east side because Raymond and them came over there to fight them and they would fight all the time. Well, when one of the fights that stand out that 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 it took place, they would fight up under the freeway, and uh, we we had a crib and he was so down. But as thing he I don't know what happened to him, but he just quit being a crib. He just quit banging, and his name was Pretty Boy. And uh, and Raymond, not Ra not Raymond, but uh, Bulldog hit him with a machete, and uh, he hit him with the machete, and it cut his cheek. So he had this little scar on his cheek. It wasn't an ugly scar either; it was a cool scar. I said, "Shit, I wish I had one." You know that looked that cool. And so, uh, you know, if he wanted a scar, you know that was a cool looking scar. So me and Pretty Boy. Uh, we would spend our time in Juvenile Hall. I, Ricky Silas, all of these guys were foot soldiers. We all grew up in Juvenile Hall. If you were banging, you lived in Juvenile Hall. I'm not bragging, but I got over 40-something arrests. I lived in Juvenile Hall. Pookie lived in Juvenile Hall. Uh, Dr. Archie had it right. He wasn't a banger, but he was a stand-up guy. He would fight. He wasn't no scary dude. He would fight but he wasn't out there hunting people down. But he would get in fights if it was over money. If it was over some type of business thing, he would he would get in fight. He, he had a hustle, you know, about himself. And that's the way it was supposed to be. As you get up out of high school, who's gonna feed you? Your mom's not gonna feed you. You gotta start maturing up out of your gang begging stage. And if you're gonna be a law-abiding citizen, then that's the way you're gonna go. But if you're gonna be a hustler, then you're gonna do things that hustlers do. You're gonna pimp. You're gonna sell drugs. You're gonna do what you gotta do to make your ends meet. You know, and a lot of crits and from every and bloods and all of the walks of lives from all of the inner cities lost their lives because they came back out of prison or camp thinking someone owed them something in their hood and they start jacking the little homies and they start getting gatted down, man. And they start having a Jones and they were trying to jack people that they grew up with or people that knew about them. And it's sad, you know, that things in that way, but it in that way for a lot of people, man. And I can name a bunch of G's, you know, that died that way. When you hold your best friend and then you learn uh, who killed him, it was Crip involvement. When you learn that he was the fourth person to have been killed by Crips, uh, the Baloo incident, the Black Jesus, the, the, the country, although, their incidents was different. And then we saw all this, Crips again, Crips again, Crips again. And when you see the whole community, people that look like me and you, afraid to go to school, afraid of the park, afraid to give a party, Crips are coming, Crips. As a matter of fact, it was either Crips or the Cribs. 
Uh, it was the same. <laughs> it was the same thing. People pronounced it, and it sounds the same. Cribs are coming. The cribs are coming. The cribs are coming. And then I'm a person that get words twisted up anyway, so I called them both cribs and cribs. But I saw the writing on the wall when you get around Broadway and where um, uh, Bull, uh, Bulldog lived. At some point, Bulldog and his uncle moved to West Gage Avenue between South Hoover Street and the 110 Freeway. Uh, around that area, you see cribs on the wall. Then you go a couple blocks down where Raymond then lived, and then you see crips on the wall. Bulldog transitioned from an east side crip to a Hoover crip in the early 1970s. So where did the Hoover come in and play at? With, because with, with uh, one of the Hoovers told him, when you get back up out of here, we need you to step on up over there in the 90s from that 83rd over there and keep this shit going. And he said, all right, I'll keep your set going. It's a small set. It's new. I'll give you my word that when I get out, I'm going to put Hoover on the map and I'm going to keep it going. But see, Bulldog was a special guy. He knew he loved Softy from Compton. Mm -hmm. And during this whole period, we had started this thing called the Long Table. And Bulldog was the, you know, was the downest motherfucker I ever ran into as far as a gangbanger goes. Hmm. So when, when when Bulldog was running the long table, was he still part of Raymond's East Side, or he had already crossed over to Hoover? He, uh, when Bulldog was part of the long table, he had all gang members' oh. interests in mind. He mm -hmm. wanted us to quit killing each other. He wanted us to go and have head up fights mm -hmm. of all else fear. What can you tell us about the long table? Uh, the long table uh, was the first gang intervention program. Around 1977, you had uh, two members uh, from each set, $50 uh, a week, two hours, twice a week, uh, but you only could pick two members. So at this time, it was uh, me and Rayford, but you might have other ones. You got Bulldog, you got Sugar Bear. I want to say Bulldog uh, was there because he was kind of one of the ones that was kind of running the whole uh, function and everything. All of the leaders of the gangs would go to the long table and all the, and, and all the niggas, that was, well, I, I'm, I'm refraining from using the word nigga, but all the brothers that was so-called down, whether they was bloods or, or, or crips, you know, you meet at the long table, they wanted us to work it out. I don't know if they paid us $50 individually or $50 all together. I think you could bring like two representatives from your neighborhood. The gang leaders was getting 50 bucks, you know what I mean? But you know, we all, you know, and they was all of the big names from all over the city met there. You got Puddin', you got Tam, uh, and it was Rosie Greer's idea to start an intervention program to address uh, inner city violence. Uh, Crips and Bloods, and particularly Black on Black. During the time of the ASD, there were a lot of passes being given out, and a lot of us would see each other at different places or whatever, and uh, we weren't, you know, beefing or anything like that with each other. So that was like one of the first attempts to um, bring some peace to the community. Who's Rosie Greer? Uh, the football player uh, uh, from the Fearsome Foursome. In fact, uh, he's the one that took the gun from Sirhan Sirhan that killed Kennedy really? at the Ambassador Hotel. That's what he's more famously known for, is taking the gun out of Sirhan Sirhan when he killed Kennedy. So when uh, 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 he started this program. It was kind of a famous and a big program with a uh, roof watched in the Sentinel newspaper. They helped it and uh, a murder happened. We found an article on you and Bulldog and Clint and also with Babyface in the article. Yeah. Babyface was 60s. In 1977, Three gang members involved in the anti-gang violence project were ordered to stand trial on a series of felony charges arising from a reported attack on a rival gang and the attempted shakedown of a teenager for cash in his car. Ray, 
22 years old at the time, former coordinator for the city-sponsored program called Project Long Table, was being charged with kidnapping, assault with a deadly weapon, and two counts of extortion. According to the newspaper, his co-defendants were Sugar Bear, Babyface, Dead Eye Clint, and OG Cutes. Um, to my knowledge, I think Raymond Washington had just got out of uh, prison around that time. So whatever time it was that he got out, that's about the time that this uh, ASD was going on. A young man that was part of the program, I would just say a blood, uh, was somewhere, some along the line. The program folks they had somebody member folks they had killed him uh, after the funeral. Uh, a murder. Uh, they came and a big fight occurred there. Uh, a shootout occurred, and that's what closed the long table down. In fact, the accused went to jail for getting caught with a shotgun. Me and Babyface ran and got away. Uh, then they started seeing it. It was the first uh, trial where you had it where they used metal detectors and stuff to look for weapons. This was one of the first trials ever to be held like that for gang members where they were uh, uh, doing the court. Who was the main gang coordinator at the long table? Uh, you had, as far as passing out the money, you had Bulldog, uh, Sugar Bear. I don't know if Big Bam was there or not, but uh, I know Bulldog, uh, Sugar Bear, and we all line up and we'll pass out, you get the $50 in cash. Uh, Babyface was there, yeah. Tell us, tell us a little bit about Bulldog. His name is kind of notorious in the, in the crib history circles. What can you tell me about Bulldog's history and his personality? Oh, Bulldog was a beast. Uh, we don't did a, quite a few things together, particularly when it came to uh, uh, getting money, robbing, and and violence. Uh, I met uh, Raymond Washington there. I met Puddin from Pyro Puddin and uh, Ralph Carter there. I met uh, Angel from uh, Brims there. I met uh, the brothers from, they call them the Hoover family. We called them West Side family, Shaft and some of the other brothers from the uh, family there. I remember, uh, I want to say Babyface was there. Um, cool, I think Cool was either from Cute 102 or Kitchen Crips. I don't actually remember uh, right offhand. Uh, I remember I want to say Bulldog. That's my partner, man. Benny uh, Simpson was his name. And then uh, I used to be a Sally because he wouldn't let nobody. You couldn't just sell it up with uh, uh, Benny. He'd tell, yeah, he'd go up single still. Uh, he was a good guy, a violent guy. Uh, died later on in life. I think of natural causes. He didn't get killed or nothing. And he was a good comrade, man. They even buried him out of town, too. In mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my partner right there. Good cat, good comrade. Where, where, was, where was Bulldog from when you first met him? East Side. Then they went from East Side. Uh, then I think they was all from A. Trey Hoover, Smiley. Or they was from Hoover. They ended up being around uh, Bulldog and claiming Hoover, Bam, and all of them. Explain that, because that's, that's kind of confusing, because you kind of link. East Side Crips as going East Side sets, East Coast Kitchen. What what made Bulldog and a lot of these original East Side Crips join or help form the Hoovers? Can you explain that? Well, uh, they were close to, you know, Hoovers right on the borderline between the East Side, uh, Tony Stacy, they all went to Bethune, Bread Hart, they right on the borderline of the East and West. So a lot of them uh, would join and end up being Hoovers. Most of the Hoovers are from the east side. Most of the Hoover Crips, uh, unless you get up into the hundreds, uh, that most of them coming down sevenfold, 
A Trey, Nine Deuce, they're more toward Bethune, Bret Hart, end up going to Fremont on that side of town. Uh, uh, you had the uh, 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 Kitchen Crips uh, 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 and other ones from that East Coast. As you notice, East Coast, the East Side doesn't have as many names and terms for gangs as they do on the West Side. On the West Side, it's every 10 blocks from 1st Street up to 220th. You got to set every 10 blocks, north, south, east, or west. But as opposed to on the west side, you got the Kitchen Crips, uh, Main Street, East Coast, uh, 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 Pebble Bishops. But you know, you, you more like got East Coast, where they're locked in as East Coast sets, seven, what is it, six, nine, uh, oh, duck, six, all that kind of stuff, as opposed to the west side, where you got a different terrain of every 10 blocks. So having the Hoovers, they were right in the middle, west side, east side, but the majority of them come from off the east side. Let me, let me ask you something. Your, 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 your childhood partners at, at, at Bret Hart, did all those kids end up turning over? Well, let me see who all, who went over. Ricky Bonneville, I don't know what Rick ended up being. He was in so much shit. Ricky Bonneville was over there. But now, like Tony Stacy, Battle, Gooseby, uh, 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 Pup, Philip Baines, uh, Joe Stanley, uh, uh, Hoover Joe, uh, Heron, uh, 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 Red, the Ransoms, Daryl Ransom, uh, Michael Steele, uh, uh, Red, uh, you had a lot of them, uh, Cartoon, Duck, uh, a lot of them from Bret Hart, most of them end up being like walnuts. Uh, uh, not a lot of them end up being from Hoover, from Bret Hart, but most of them come from Bethune during that time, end up being Hoovers, more so as opposed to down on that end. When you go up into the hundreds, that's when they'll be, uh, the Hoovers will be more from the west side of town as opposed to uh, the east side. But one thing I will say, at the end of the day, mostly everybody that started off on the west side, their roots are from the east side because they just migrated over. So everybody has a touch of the west side or the east side because you got to remember, that used to be the showcase for the entertainers on Central, that was the place to go. Now, starting in the 70s, the West Side was taken over as far as the place to go. Soul Train, Gang Banging and Pop Locking, the form. So now, the glitter and the glamour is starting to be replaced on the West Side. ASD, which was located on 46th Street and Broadway, had received a $91,581 grant from the City of Los Angeles to operate their business. Bulldog was listed as the project coordinator. After a 13 count criminal indictment filed by the district attorney's office, the project long table would be no more. OG Cuse would eventually plead no contest and be sent to YTS in 1977. Bulldog took it to trial with the support of Rosie Greer he ended up beating the case. In April of 1978, Bulldog was involved in a car accident in which two people were killed. One of his passengers, a well-known name out of Long Beach, Chico Bell. According to the Lompoc newspaper, the driver of a car involved in an accident that resulted in two fatalities had been arrested on felony manslaughter charges. Benny Ray Simpson, the driver, 23 of Los Angeles was booked in Lompoc Jail Tuesday under $2,000 bail. Two passengers in Simpson's car were killed Monday in a crash on Highway 101, two miles south of Bilton. Three other persons, all from Los Angeles and San Jose, and all passengers in the car were injured. The California Highway Patrol said the car rammed into a guardrail 
causing the guardrail to pierce the car, and Bulldog was slightly injured. Bulldog died in Los Angeles October 19, 2008. The cause of death is reportedly an accident. His body was sent back home for burial, as is all his family members. As for Uncle Earl, he too died June 21st, 2015, while visiting a friend's house in Oklahoma. He was 75 years old. 